Thank you very much, uh, Kushida-san. Um, the original title was uh, Chronicles of the Silicon Valley, Japan, Relationship and Lessons Learned, but I added in parentheses or not learned, because I was not really quite sure, just like Ken said, you know, if, he, if Japan really learned. So, um, well, uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. I'm very, very uh, delighted to be here this afternoon to uh, share my uh, observation about uh, our Silicon Valley-Japan uh, relationship. Um, actually, I'm sure nobody uh, is interested in seeing somebody's uh, you know, private photos, um, and especially you know, like the photos of mine when I was uh, much younger. Um, and I don't mean to advertise myself or my firm uh, in this session, but actually having been um, to Stanford for the first time in 64, and then uh, uh, 76 through 78 as a student, and uh, I've been based here since 85, in the past like 30 years. So I consider myself as a sort of integral part of uh, Silicon Valley. And before moving forward, I want to somehow, you know, record the history of Silicon Valley, how it evolved, and actually, as integral, I mean, integral part of Silicon Valley, um, what what I was doing also. <clears throat> so uh, today, um, I'd like to share with you uh, my observation and my uh, direct experience in Silicon Valley Japan relationship and lessons learned or not to not learned, but. Uh, um, oh, you take photos? So, <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, I'd like to uh, share with you uh, my insider's view of how Silicon Valley and its relationship with Japan <coughs> evolved <coughs> over the past 40 years through you know, some photos. And then um, I'd like to share with you also several presentations uh, I did at, at various uh, uh, situations. I give a talk, uh, I think, almost every month, uh, here, either here or in Japan. <clears throat> and uh, uh, just to you know, pick up some of the points that uh, uh, we should probably uh, be addressing. And then um, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, discuss how Japanese companies have been, or not have been, able to you know, capitalize on what's happening in Silicon Valley. So, um, before um, moving forward, I'd like to summarize uh, Silicon Valley and so that we can you know, sh uh, have the common base. <clears throat> uh, let me just take this off. Let's see. And uh, one more thing I have to apologize. Be um, uh, I just came back from Japan a couple of days ago. I'm, trying, I'm struggling to recover from jet lag, so my you know, language capability deteriorated uh, uh, dramatically. And uh, probably you could uh, help me <laughs> if uh, I started speaking Japanese, you know. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is Silicon Valley. Everybody knows. But I don't know how many people know how, f you know, what's the distance between San Francisco and San Jose? Very close. Actually, uh, 50 miles. And uh, it's a small area. Be uh, I'm including the San Francisco area because of uh, the recent uh, phenomena of a lot of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, social game, uh, 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 software, and also uh, life science uh, ventures uh, near uh, uh, UCSF. <clears throat> so it's a small area. <clears throat> then uh, Silicon Valley. Um, Starting with uh, maybe uh, people say uh, in 1939, HP in Addison Avenue uh, in Palo Alto, <clears throat> but that, that was before the war. 55 or 56, actually, to be exact, uh, February 56, uh, William Shockley started uh, uh, this, you know, William Shockley uh, uh, semiconductor lab. So. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. Um, you know, go um, each of uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the uh, boxes here. But uh, as you can see, the uh, Silicon Valley evolved like this, and indeed, uh, uh, 
as you know, uh, mid the 90s, as uh, internet uh, became very, very, uh, you know, commercialized and very, very popular. And uh, we have now a totally different uh, uh, time uh, than, you know, before uh, pre-internet age. <coughs> Uh, and uh, so basically, when I think about, uh, you know, how, wh what's the mechanism of where, in which uh, the silicon valley is working? Most uh, concise model I've uh, been able to come about was uh, this, this one. Where money is, more people gather, more, more, more information comes, and more technology. And uh, there's an accumulation of knowledge, and innovation happens. And many of the innovation will be uh, commercialized, and a few of the commercialization will succeed. Looking at this uh, uh, few success, the money will come to Silicon Valley again. And uh, then more money, looking for more money, people, information, and technology. So basically, this is probably the most simple, you know, uh, a model uh, to describe what's going on in Silicon Valley. And to really, uh, uh, if you look at this, uh, it's very clear that uh, uh, the money is uh, really concentrating in Silicon Valley. Is uh, effect uh, as of uh, 2014, as much as you know, like $50 billion of uh, venture capital money was invested in uh, startup companies in the United States overall. But of that, 48%, 48%, almost half of that money, that's uh, almost like $25 billion, is, you know, was uh, invested in this area. That's quite amazing, right? <coughs> now, uh, and and the result in this is actually lower part of uh, the the Silicon Valley as I showed uh, before, but so if you uh, see this is like uh, forty kilometers no I mean uh, <clears throat> yes forty kilometers diameter uh, area there are so many uh, the then before uh, venture companies but uh, now you know, have grown to very, very large corporations, uh, generating a lot of revenue worldwide, uh, generating a lot of jobs worldwide. And uh, so that's uh, uh, what Silicon Valley is all about. Uh, let's see. Okay. Shall we move on? Okay, so as I mentioned early, um, uh, first time I came to the United States was in 1964, when I was in high school, <clears throat> I was in an exchange student program called AFS program. Actually, uh, I spent one year uh, in uh, <clears throat> Pennsylvania, but uh, on the way, uh, we had orientation, one week orientation on the campus of Stanford University, uh, staying in the uh, dormitory. And that time, uh, uh, I don't think there was a term, um, Silicon Valley. Uh, yet, but it was a beautiful place coming from Japan. I was so impressed uh, So that was the first time uh, You know big shock for me and Then um, after that I uh, well actually graduated from Tokyo University uh, back in 72 <clears throat> and the first uh, job I took up was uh, with uh, a company called Marubeni, Marubeni Electronics. Actually, there was no term in Japan Bencha Kigyo at that time, I don't think. But what I was doing was actually to develop a, uh, a uh, mechanical CAD system based on mini computer. Mini computer, probably younger people here uh, are not, don't know what mini computers are, but there's a certain architecture called uh, 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 mini computer. And uh, I was using Data Journal's uh, mini computer to develop a uh, uh, mechanical CAD system, along with uh, a, my two colleagues, one from uh, the United States, one from uh, Japan, who was actually doing uh, um, a designing of a Nissan motor, uh, Nissan car uh, at that time. So at that time, I didn't know um, it was uh, 
you know, uh, actually uh, uh, not only developing the uh, the product, but also uh, we sold several products. So later, I mean, after I moved here, well, that, what, actually what I was doing was actually, you know, start venture, and uh, Marubeni was uh, a, a uh, you know, the uh, funder. I mean, they funded our effort. So that was quite interesting in retrospect. Then I realized that a computer uh, would be a very, very important thing. So uh, <clears throat> I moved to IBM. Uh, and thanks to IBM, uh, I received a grant uh, to uh, come to the United States. And uh, I uh, <clears throat> uh, came to the computer science department and where uh, um, I, you know, the uh, uh, Dr. Um, Professor Ed Feigenbaum here is uh, one of the professors I uh, uh, really enjoyed uh, uh, seeing. And then, um, so that was, uh, you know, uh, Stanford days. And then I joined McKinsey and Company to actually start working on uh, a, uh, various companies, not only Japan, but also the uh, United States and Europe to uh, help them. <coughs> develop the new businesses. Uh, I left uh, McKinsey um, 85 to start uh, Azka Inc., which is uh, my, that, that's about 30 years ago. It's quite amazing, but uh, uh, specialized, um, especially you're working for US, Japan, uh, new business development, and uh, still we're doing it. And actually, uh, uh, Kushida-san uh, uh, introduced me as uh, <coughs> Managing Director of Azka Venture Partners. That's a venture fund which uh, we started in uh, uh, 2014. Um, I mentioned Logitech board uh, because I'll show you the, uh, the, some photos. Uh, these are VC venture capital activities. I was also involved as a, a, in Park, Xerox Park, as a senior executive advisor <coughs> to help them their uh, open innovation uh, with uh, Japan, Japanese companies. Uh, actually, I brought um, my. Oh, here, here. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> so, uh, this is. <laughs> now, now I, I'm very embarrassed <laughs> showing my photo when I was uh, like 17 years old. And this is uh, 1960. Well, these are unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, new pictures. You know, I could not find uh, Amanda here. Uh, Amanda-san uh, was trying to help me find uh, old photos, but I couldn't. Uh, uh, could not find. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, Stanford campus, as you know. Uh, um, spent one week for orientation. So let's let's move on. <laughs> so, this is. 1970s. Uh, do you know what store this is? Where this is? Actually, if you move, if you walk towards, uh, walk to right, uh, there is a store called uh, Sula Table. It's in uh, Taiwan Country Village. Like in the 70s, there this this is a corner. Uh, this is El Camino Real here. You enter, and the corner. Uh, was, uh, uh, I forgot the name, but there was an electronic shop. And when I was at Stanford, uh, there was a news that uh, Commodore, a company called Commodore, I announced uh, <coughs> what's called personal computer. And so my, you know, uh, classmates and I rushed to the electronic store and uh, so this uh, Commodore PET 64. That was very old, <laughs> even before Apple II. That was 1976, if I remember correctly. Well, this is totally different. It's a, what is it? Paris Cup Cupcake. I <laughs> used to be a, a, a electronic shop there. Um, <clears throat> then, oh, by the way, this is uh, Apple II. Came out that came out in 77. Um, this was not sold in the shop, but this I just wanted to show uh, this picture as a reference. This is a picture of uh, um, uh, Auto, which was developed at the Xerox Park as a first 
graphical user interface uh, workstation, <coughs> certainly with mouse. <coughs> okay. Uh, then this picture. This is uh, my life, uh, my days at Stanford. As you can see, um, <coughs> here's uh, this is the, around here is uh, the medical center, all the medical uh, you know center at Stanford Hospital. And this is computer science department this way. And uh, that was uh, almost uh, like uh, one of the class classrooms were um, uh, like a trailer house. Uh, Dr. Fagenbaum, wasn't that right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, and I had a long hair, uh, bell bottom jeans. <laughs> and actually, this is a photo of uh, an old AI lab. Artificial intelligence lab, and this is uh, it's, this is amazing. This is 1976. You know, this a mobile robot. It's a robotic, like a, you know, car <laughs> developed at uh, AI lab. And uh, I used to go here uh, almost every night. Uh, very exciting days. And this is where I first used the. Uh, what's called XGP uh, zero, zero graphic uh, uh, printer. Uh, it's like uh, today everyone uses uh, uh, the kind of printer, but that, was, that time was uh, rather big uh, uh, equipment. And uh, <clears throat> this is, well, um, luckily uh, we were, I was able to graduate. <laughs> uh, this was my, uh, the, uh, my wife and uh, the, the, this couple is from Greece. Uh, uh, next to uh, my apartment um, is in Escondido village. Now, this picture is uh, in my apartment. This is my wife. And I'm taking a picture, so I'm not in the picture. But uh, uh, these three guys are my classmates. And I'll come back to uh, uh, this photo later. OK, the next photo. I really want to uh, show this uh, uh, to you because this is the Galvez house uh, where, if I rem remember correctly, uh, you know, the, uh, this A Park, the Monday session started. Every Monday at that time, Japan was very, very, uh, become very, very uh, hot issue. And uh, uh, so actually, that wasn't like after I moved here. Uh, 85, uh, uh, Professor Ak o Okimoto uh, was the director of A Park, and uh, I used to go there every Monday uh, for lunch, brown bag, at that time, brown bag session, uh, to discuss uh, various uh, US Japan issues. And uh, I tried to find a photo from those days, but I could not. But uh, what I found was uh, this. Uh, the uh, the photo from '98. Uh, this is a, where the uh, alumni center is today on Galvez. Um, so this is uh, quite a memorable um, photo. Now, um, so U.S. Japan relationship. Okay, '80s. Uh, well, Japan will uh, be uh, uh, mentioned soon, but uh, uh, before that, probably I should uh, share this with you. Um, this uh, photo, can anyone tell what this story is? Actually, this is a, a Palo Alto bicycle shop. Yes, that's right. And I think this is a 171 University Avenue. And this one, here, you cannot see it, but it's uh, 165 uh, University Avenue. Actually, this is where um, Logitech in the US was started. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not from Logitech. I, actually, I, I brought mine uh, made by Logitech, <laughs> but uh, I compromised and using this. So that's the, the reason I'm mentioning it is because these guys, not this, but this guy, this guy, this guy, especially this guy, this guy. Uh, if you can see this guy and this guy. So two of the three 
founders of Logitech uh, were uh, my classmates from Stanford, uh, the computer science department. Um, is uh, Daniel Boyle from Switzerland, is uh, uh, Piero di Zappacosta from Italy. And uh, so then when uh, they left, they graduated from Stanford and went back to uh, uh, Europe, they started uh, um, uh, Logitech. Later, uh, Giacomo Marini, another Italian guy, uh, joined. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, by that time, uh, I had started uh, um, asking, this is a picture of uh, me, my first associate, and my assistant. Actually, uh, th this is worth mentioning because this lady, uh, young lady, Chris England, was the best friend of uh, uh, Stacy Green, who was a, the assistant to uh, uh, Dan Okimoto, uh, starting in 85. So I, I'm uh, divulging a lot of uh, personal things, but uh, 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 bear with me, because it's uh, part of uh, the history of the Silicon Valley. <laughs> uh, now, um, actually, uh, Logitech was uh, started as a, a software company, not mouse or a keyboard company. Uh, and the Jap a Japanese company called Rico, uh, I'm sure many of you know, it's an office equipment company, a printer, copier company. They uh, gave us an order so that we could uh, stay on. Otherwise, there was no, uh, there were, you know, no uh, Logitech. Um, yeah, we were, we were uh, uh, trying to become a software company, but it's very, very difficult to uh, uh, make money in uh, software development. And then Rico. Uh, given us order to um, develop a software texture processor for uh, 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 the workstation they developed. <clears throat> and after that, actually, uh, Daniel Borel in Switzerland, uh, he met uh, Professor Nicole uh, in Switzerland and to receive uh, commercial rights for the uh, mechanical mouse uh, Professor uh, Nicole <coughs> developed. And that's how a Logitech really started as a sort of senseware company. So that's why I want to uh, share this uh, 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 photo with you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay, so this is the 80s. So as I said, 85, uh, I started uh, uh, my own firm, leaving uh, McKinsey & Company uh, to help uh, to work between Japan and the United States. And a, a lot of, uh, um, a uh, discussions going on uh, between Japan and the United States. Uh, there was a, you know, a famous uh, uh, trade war between Japan and the United States. Uh, and, uh, well, Japanese diversification, or J Japanese companies started uh, diversifying into uh, new business areas. Uh, this is Japanese uh, uh, sangyo, I think, uh, uh, Nakodo. So this is, uh, like uh, a uh, heavy industry in Japan and the uh, uh, US VDB, they call it, uh, startup companies. So uh, I was actually one of the few uh, people, I think, um, who are Japanese and uh, started helping uh, uh, companies both in you know, Japan and the United States to basically to bridge uh, the, uh, the two uh, countries. Uh, and also, um, there was a, at that time, we'll see um, uh, a second a venture capital boom in Japan. And so there's an article uh, saying Japanese venture capital targeting uh, Silicon Valley. And actually, interesting, um, or then uh, um, even after that, I mean, this is uh, 80s, but uh, now into 90s. Uh, in the Japanese economy, and the yen was very high, and everything looked so cheap uh, in the eyes of Japanese companies. So they started uh, acquiring a lot of companies, including like uh, Rockefeller Center and uh, uh, Pebble Beach. And even actually, French uh, people got very interested in uh, relationship uh, between Japan and the United States, and there were 
are two books written about uh, um, in Silicon Valley and mainly in, in Japan, where uh, actually uh, I'm uh, referred to by the Valet du Risque. Uh, Etrange du Samurai. So this is uh, Samurai, isn't it? Right. Uh, oh, so 1997, so Japanese uh, media also became very, very interested in uh, being active in Silicon Valley. And the Nikkei business, uh, Nikkei BP, <coughs> uh, opened an office at, uh, in, in, in Santa Clara, and I was asked to, uh, I had an order of uh, introducing uh, 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 go to Moore, uh, co-founder of Intel, at the uh, inaugural uh, um, seminar, uh, which uh, uh, NKVP uh, uh, hosted. And uh, certainly he talked about uh, Moore's Law, and I was asked to ask more questions and so forth, and uh, it was quite a fun. That was 1997. Okay, so... Um, I shared some pictures. Now let's get it to a uh, more a little bit academic uh, discussion. Um, so this is a, a long-term trading. I mean, uh, a trend of uh, uh, the uh, exchange rate. Uh, and actually, interestingly, um, nineteen seventy-six through seventy-seven, uh, seventy-eight. I was uh, at Stanford when the dollar. I mean, the yen became very strong. I was very, very happy to see that. But after, after that, you know, the, uh, the uh, dollar was, uh, dollar kept uh, dropping. So uh, uh, President Carter said, let's protect the uh, uh, dollar. And then Plaza Accord, EU crisis, and then the 97 uh, Korea, Asia crisis happened. Uh, and as you know, uh, Lima shock happened. And so the, uh, this is interest rate, mm. but this has some certain implication on the appetite on the part of the Japanese companies in terms of investing in uh, uh, Silicon Valley and elsewhere. And also, this is a, the, the GDP growth. <clears throat> My firm, ASCA, was started uh, in 85 when actually GDP growth was, you know, both high. So I, I think uh, I started uh, my firm at the right time. But after that, uh, the uh, GDP uh, kept going down. Um, <clears throat> so if uh, we look at uh, you know long term, I mean from '85 through uh, today, uh, these are the I think uh, characteristics of uh, Silicon Valley companies towards. Japan or Japanese companies and Japanese companies at towards Silicon Valley. Um, <clears throat> how much time do I have? Until okay, okay, good, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so late '85, late '80s, there are a lot of opportunities for um, startup companies in Silicon Valley uh, to do uh, alliance and partnership. With Japanese companies uh, because the yen was becoming stronger and Japanese companies were trying to diversify into uh, new businesses because uh, you know smokestack industries were had to uh, try something new and uh, there was a lot of money in pocket and uh, so on the Japanese part uh, so LEC means uh, large established corporation. I don't know, but pe different people say it called different way, but uh, I call it um, <coughs> uh, large uh, established corporations. Um, uh, so they, they, as we saw in the former uh, slides on the articles, uh, a lot of the Japanese companies started coming to um, uh, Silicon Valley and the United States. But they didn't have many experiences in dealing with high tech ventures in the United States. So many, many of uh, uh, large corporations in Japan uh, got burned. Uh, for instance, you know, a small company, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of one example, very distinctive example, where uh, uh, one, a printer company, Venture, um, very, very high technology, uh, asked 
a steel company in Japan, one of the, the largest in the world, uh, to invest one million dollars first. Then uh, later, starting to I mean, run out of money and ask for another 1.5 million dollars. And then uh, only about a year later, this printer company said, "Hi, Daddy." We don't have money anymore, so you, can you acquire us? And then this company, uh, steel company, uh, was uh, almost forced to acquire uh, this uh, printer company. And then it turns out that the, the new business they tried to g grow uh, didn't uh, uh, succeed. So they had to sell the technology uh, at a much lower price. And that is just one of many, many examples that uh, I saw uh, during that time. I, and uh, I tried to help those companies, both Japan and the United States, but um, still there were so many, many uh, failures. Uh, 90s, um, <coughs> well, um, Silicon Valley uh, companies <coughs> kept um, um, uh, trying to, you know, uh, the alliance with Japanese companies. But actually, like 1991, Around that time, Japan's, especially the real estate bubble economy, a burst, and so there's no money. And then, realizing that, uh, Silicon Valley companies started going to Korea, Taiwan, and China directly, passing Japan, uh, and and uh, Jap Japan enters a um, you know very long dark uh, tunnel. Uh, and uh, although uh, large corporations try to uh, di diversify still, but uh, really uh, uh, financial uh, situation was not, uh, not great. So uh, nothing, I mean, not many things uh, could happen. And then, as you, we all know, uh, 2001, the beginning of 2001, the net bubble uh, crashes and uh, VC investments hit the bottom in actually uh, 2003. Then, um, is, that, is that me? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, let's forget it. Oh. Okay. Sorry. And then, so uh, uh, by you know the year 2000, I think m many uh, startup companies and companies in Silicon Valley kind of are not. We're not interested in dealing with Japanese companies because there's no money, <laughs> and uh, certainly uh, Japanese uh, market was still big. But uh, you know what really uh, startup companies need is uh, a, a, a strategic investment from those companies, uh, which uh, they could not uh, um, find in Japan, <clears throat> and Japan continues to uh, suffer. And during that time, Japanese you know, the management, the man, top management people of Japanese corporations have become very, very conservative and defensive, I would say. And uh, it's a great, big change uh, compared with, uh, you know, these times. And then, um, well, after that, I put uh, 2007 because this is uh, the Lehman shock. Uh, so the, in terms of VC investment, uh, the amount declined a little bit and then started recovering again in the United States or uh, in the Silicon Valley. Now, uh, in, in the Japan side, LECs struggled to recover, but many of them lost their position. You know, many, many examples. Uh, Sharp, uh, Panasonic, I mean, you name it. <laughs> you name it. Uh, quite, uh, quite unfortunate and sad things uh, for Japan, but that uh, uh, what was happening. But at the same time, a, we started seeing a sort of new wave of uh, Japanese entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, you know, to come to Silicon Valley. That's a totally different uh, uh, type of people than, you know, very established old uh, companies. That's a very, very encouraging thing, but uh, uh, that started happening. Now, uh, just a couple years uh, ago, um, started. I mean, Facebook, Google. Is it, is it a bubbly bubble economy again? 
Uh, I'd like to discuss with you <laughs> if uh, we have the time. Um, and uh, also on the Japan side, Abenomics um, is encouraging network, um, uh, you know, establishing network between um, uh, Japan and the United States, and especially in Silicon Valley. And uh, uh, helped that, helped by that, and also helped by a supposedly a recovery uh, of the economy in Japan, uh, and also um, desperation. The Japanese companies have become very, very desperate. Otherwise, they'll, I mean, uh, if they don't do anything, they'll die. They're destined to die. So they have a, again, the renewed interest in investing in Silicon Valley. That's uh, what's happening right now, I think. And so, seeing that, I, I, my, my observation is that uh, again, uh, many companies in Silicon Valley have started being interested in working with Japan. That's very encouraging. Um, okay. So this is just the data that shows uh, uh, how many Japanese companies are in, in, in the Bay Area. And uh, there was a Nikkei Business uh, uh, <coughs> article uh, earlier um, last summer about, oh, as many as, uh, you know, uh, 719 companies, Japanese companies are work, uh, operating in, uh, in Silicon Valley now. <coughs> okay. So next slide is a little bit sensitive, but uh, I'll share this with you. <laughs> because, not uh, because uh, I want to share uh, what we do at my firm, but this is a reflection of, uh, I think, you know, uh, what's going on um, in between Japan and the United States. Actually, this is, uh, ask us, there's no absolute figure. This is just a trend and a relative. Uh, this red line shows number of clients uh, our clients, uh, which are large Japanese corporations. So as you can see, late, you know, 80s, both, I mean, Japanese companies, we had many Japanese clients. Also, uh, US SME, small, medium enterprises, uh, typically, you know, high-tech ventures, started uh, immediately, very, very steep. Many clients, many projects. And then, 90, they, as I s explained earlier, um, you know, the Silicon Valley companies started seeing a oh, declination of Jap Japan's economy. And so, uh, our engagement with uh, small companies in Silicon Valley started declining. And Japanese uh, uh, companies, also their uh, uh, economic situation was not so good. So. Uh, well, we're, I was one. I mean, one time I was uh, very concerned whether we could ask out could <laughs> survive or not. But uh, um, luckily, we survived. And uh, 2000, uh, yeah, back panel for those uh, Japanese. LA, I mean, yeah, we had uh, continue. I mean, uh, actually, interesting thing is, is that uh, Japanese companies are rather loyal once they become your clients. So when the time is bad, uh, they try to uh, work with, with firms like uh, us. So basically, this is a combination of, you know, the Japanese LAC, LECs and US SMEs. So, you know, it's a similar kind of trend. Just wanted to um, uh, share with you. <coughs> okay. So, um, I'd like to move on to um, the next topic. The, have we learned anything from our experience? And actually, I give a talk almost every month, uh, you know, uh, in Japan or the United States. Uh, and this is just a select list of presentations uh, addressing the, the issue of US-Japan um, relationship uh, over time. As you can see here, though, it was just, uh, you know, interesting that 91, 92, 93, these are uh, speeches or, you know, lectures I gave to the U.S. audience in terms of how to deal with Japanese companies. The audience was mainly startup companies, uh, 
trying to develop their business with uh, Japanese LECs. But around here, kind of, our, I'm turning around and said, started saying, what you guys in Japan should do uh, to, you know, uh, grow into the 21st century. This is a message from Silicon Valley. Then also, let's be more entrepreneurial. Oh, sorry, this is written, this part is written in Japanese, but I try to explain in English. Um, uh, so the, uh, um, <clears throat> let's be uh, uh, more entrepreneurial. This is a message to the Japanese audience. And then, 2001, uh, to basically Japanese LECs, uh, how to a, develop new businesses by a, through, I mean, through a strategic alliance with uh, startup companies in Silicon Valley. Uh, then, this is uh, a issues uh, that Japanese uh, corporations are facing in terms of uh, uh, alliance. Then, uh, just a couple of years ago, um, or three years ago, uh, how Japanese corporations uh, can uh, and or shouldn't uh, capitalize on what's going on in, in Silicon Valley uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, new business, business development. Um, and uh, just to uh, uh, run through very quick, very quickly um, what I say in here. Oh, so this is uh, 2001, okay, so Benchaki Taking a new business sozo. Well, this is mainly addressing uh, the, the the communication line between a Japanese headquarters and uh, offices in Silicon Valley. Somebody is uh, laughing and maybe <laughs> nodding. <laughs> right. Too too complicated. Too complicated. So don't don't bother. <laughs> anyway, this is written in Japanese. So the. The, if you understand it's complicated, then that's, I, I've achieved my objective, so it's okay. <laughs> but here is uh, the thing. This is uh, um, the first point. Well, let's, let me summarize in English later, because this, this, you know, the, this slide with uh, this star uh, carries some message to the, the later uh, slide I, I mentioned. Sure. But uh, those who can read Japanese, maybe, quickly you know, read what it says. <clears throat> okay, now this is uh, the uh, issues uh, facing uh, uh, Japanese companies in terms of alliance, uh, uh, 2005. There are many different ways to uh, um, uh, develop new businesses. Now this is the, the same message as before. This is uh, issues uh, uh, facing a Japanese companies in uh, uh, alliance. Uh, this is the continuation, and this is the most recent one. This is, yeah, again, uh, how to um, capitalize on uh, Silicon Valley's innovation ecosystem um, for the purpose of uh, developing new businesses. <clears throat> so, th this is again uh, the list of uh, uh, issues. The point is that, you know, the first presentation, the blue. Slides I share with you had uh, you know the list of issues, but this one most recent two three years ago, exactly the same points that I had mentioned. So, uh, about three years ago in this uh, presentation, I told the audience you know uh, about fifteen years ago, I gave a, a, a talk on the same uh, 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 topic. And here I brought this exactly the same slide as the one I used 15 years ago. And uh, a lot of people in the audience laughed and, <laughs> well, that's very true, still, still our issue. Um, so let, let me summarize this in English. Um, okay. <clears throat> so the, yeah, the only the items, but uh, it's a really chronic issue facing Japanese companies in capitalizing on um, um, Silicon Valley's ecosystem. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, point out that there's a very, very different uh, attitude or approach to innovation. Uh, I think one of the reasons why Japanese companies uh, lost, uh, you know, their position 
in the past like 10, 15 years, is that they were, their attitude toward innovation. I mean, re more, just recently start, people start talking about open innovation, but traditionally I think Japanese companies are very proud of their technology. They are, you know, uh, believer of uh, closed innovation. Um, and over, I would say, a uh, vertical integration. And there's no kind of possibility for intaking new ideas from outside or licensing out their, you know, good technology to, uh, uh, so that the ecosystem uh, would grow. Um, Secondly, I think Japanese companies have become very, very um, conservative during the past uh, 15 years. And traditionally, Japanese companies have been very, very conservative, but uh, especially in dealing with uh, uh, startup companies in Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, they, many companies really don't know how to uh, think about uh, the, the required risk. If you are to, do some, to start something new, the risk is always, you know, associated with it. 